Praise the name of the Lord. We greet you with Jesus' joy this morning. What a privilege and an honor it is to be in worship with you today. We are just your cousins from up the street and around the corner. The Zion Hill Agape Baptist Church, where I'm proud to serve as pastor. My name is Reverend Brandon Spriggs. And boy, do we praise God for you, House of Hope, how you have been friends and sister churches to us down throughout the years. We thank God for your beloved pastor. We know that you are not starved for any good preaching because you have a, pro a prophet in the pulpit every Sunday. So we praise God today for this man of God who would turn over the mic to one such as I. It is an honor, it is a privilege, and it is a joy indeed. We thank God for you, Pastor Luke Nelson White and First Lady White. Uh, my wife, First Lady Jolene, sends her love, and we praise God for you and look for the fellowship to continue for many years to come. The hymn writer said to us, time is filled with swift transition, not of earth unmoved can stand, but build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hands. What swift and transitional times we live in today, where so much is going on and God is doing things suddenly and without warning, and he doesn't even ask our permission to do it. We thank God today that he is sovereign and that he knows what's best and that he knows how to move his people from where they are to where they ought to be. So won't you join me in a word of prayer for a moment, Father? We thank you for what you're doing in this season. We thank you that you are including us in it, that you're not leaving anybody behind, but that all that will hold to your unchanging hand will see what blessings lie around the corner. Father, we know indeed that there is a tremendous and mighty blessing for House of Hope, and we thank you, dear Lord, that you're going to reveal it more and more. Father, they have enough light for the step that they're on right now. But thank you, God, that as they look back, they'll be able to see where you brought them from and it'll give them hope for going forward in the future. Now, Father, as we begin to open up your word and hear with us, saith the Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will prick our hearts, will lead us and guide us into all truth as he always does that we will willfully obey and let it dig down deep in the soil of our hearts and grow up bushels of faith. Help us to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Follow me, if you will, to Exodus chapter 14, starting at verse 10, ending in verse 15. Exodus chapter 14. Verses 10 through 15. And the word of God reads as follows. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their voices, their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said, Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians, then that we should die in the wilderness. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. The flower withereth, and the grass fadeth, but the word of our Lord 
shall stand forever. We praise God today that as the Lord is dealing with you, House of Hope, on uh, going forward, we share in that theme. And we want to talk today from the subject, go forward and let God fight. Go forward and let God fight. Exodus is the second book in the entire Bible out of all 66 books. God made the second book a book about leaving bondage and heading towards blessing. That's what God wants for all of his people. That is the theme ever since the fall of man in the book of Genesis. God is trying to lead his people out of bondage into blessing. And the problem is not necessarily if God can lead us out of bondage and into blessing, but rather if we will follow. In the book of Exodus, we find that the children of Israel are now living and prospering in Egypt, but then they get a Pharaoh who did not remember their ancestors and decided to enslave them. They are now in bondage. And as they are in bondage, they cry out to God for a deliverer. And God hears their cry and he sends them Moses. Moses comes along and he approaches Pharaoh after going through the first 40 years of his coming to faith. He comes to Pharaoh and he says, the God of Israel says, let my people go. The people, uh, apparently, according to the verses we just read, had some concerns that they raised with Moses. They said, listen, it's good what you're trying to do, but... Don't you think that we ought to just leave well enough alone? Uh, yeah, sure, we're slaves, but we got good masters here. We, we, we can handle uh, being in this bondage. It's, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, but God had better around the corner. How many of you know that you can't stay in bondage when God has shown you better? When God shows you that he has a land flowing with milk and honey, you can't stay right here building bricks without straw. Yeah, and so um, uh, Moses finally convinces Israel that God is on their side. It comes in the form of ten plagues. The tenth plague takes the firstborn of every childhood in Egypt, but it didn't touch the Israelites because they put lamb's blood, innocent lamb's blood, the innocent lamb's blood of the firstborn lamb over their doorpost. And when the spirit of death came to their house, it realized that some firstborn has already died here. I wish I had time to really unpack that thing for you to let you know that that firstborn lamb was the firstborn lamb, son of God. His name was Jesus, and he shed his blood. And if we apply it to the doorpost of our hearts, the spirit of eternal death has to pass us over. But I find that Exodus uh, could have ended right there, but yet it continues to tell the story. I find today, brothers and sisters, that Exodus is all about following God. It's all about following God, especially in chapters 13 through 15. It's about following the Lord because in chapter 13, verse 17 and verse 18, God maps out the route for Israel. And interestingly enough, God took them the long way. Somebody say the long way. They avoided, avoided uh, Egyptian military posts uh, in order to not have to flee from a fight. Also, God uh, wasn't in a hurry because he knew they arrived in perfect time. There is a news flash for you that God always gets to where he's going right on time. The old saint said he may not get there when you want him to, but he'll be there right on time. Ask Lazarus, Lazarus to tell you that he's known to be four days late, but he's always on time. What an on time God. We serve his timing is perfect, and therefore he is not in a hurry because he knew that they would get to where they need to be in perfect time. And so God takes them the long way around. 
And isn't it such the plight of we who are the children of God, and especially those who have been living the African-American experience here in America, we have had to take the long way around. We've had to take the long way around coming out of bondage and going through reconstruction and depression and Jim Crow and civil rights and now even Black Lives Matter and insurrections. We find ourselves often going the long way around. And the long way around isn't so bad, my brothers and sisters, because I found that God is always on time, even when he takes you the long way around. Somebody under the sound of my voice looking back over your life and feeling sorry for yourself. Mm -mm, don't do that. Don't feel sorry for yourself because God divinely orchestrated your route. He is your GPS. He knows where we're going. He knows your estimated time time of arrival and he's going to get you there at the right time. So don't look at somebody else blessing, talking about you should have that, you should have more money, you should have the house, you should have the car. God has what he has for you when he has it for you. So enjoy the routes. Enjoy the scenic route. Enjoy what God is showing you along the way. God is always on time. He is their tour guide. And he leads them by a cloud in daylight and fire by night. Now let me help you with this because the cloud was a shield and a shade for the sun. Uh, not only was God leading them, but he was also protecting them while he was leading them. Praise the name of our God. I've come to find out one thing, my brothers and sisters, uh, that God uh, is always in the business of protecting while he provides and even while he reroutes us. Notice with me, for those of us who go to Sunday school, that when the cloud moved, when the fire moved, they moved. And when it stopped, they stopped. Notice here, my brothers and sisters, that they were led by a pillar and not politics. They were led by a pillar and not popularity. Huh? If they had gone with politics, they would have voted to go the wrong way. Because somebody surely would have said, isn't it faster to go this way? But they would have found themselves right smack dab in the middle of a fight that they weren't ready for. Sometimes you got to praise God for the ways that he didn't take you because you probably wouldn't have survived those ways. But God knows how to lead you in ways. And you can't leave it up to politics. You can't leave it up to a unanimous decision. You got to go with God in the way that God wants you to go. You can't leave it up to popularity because if they had followed popularity, they would have gone back to Egypt and just paused in the wilderness. But how many of you can say with me today that I'd rather follow the pillar than politics? I'd rather follow the pillar than popularity. I'd rather follow the pillar than uh, people. And I praise God that he gives us pillars of cloud by day and pillars of fire by night to lead us and to guide us. And we ought to move when he says move. And we ought to stand still. When he says stand still. Divine commendation as a result of definite reaction which prompted direct proclamation that demanded mobilization. Hallelujah. It is as much about faith as it is about following. By chapter 14, God's people have their faith challenged. And please know that you following is never detached from faith. Your following is never detached from faith because somebody has the testimony here today that ever since I decided to follow the Lord, my faith has been challenged. But thank God that we walk by faith and not by sight. 
Thank God that the just shall live by faith. Thank God for faith. And by chapter 14, Egypt is pursuing. Israel is panicking, but God still is powerful. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me preach. Uh, I'll say it again. Egypt is pursuing. Israel is panicking, but God is still powerful. How many of you know today that God still has the power no matter who is pursuing you and who is uh, after you and on your track. God still has power to do things that he said he would do. That's why I've come to realize, just as I said earlier, that divine commendation as a result of definite reaction prompts direct proclamation that demands mobilization. Here's what I'm saying. You have the destroyer behind you. Um, you, you. You have the destroyer behind you, but you got destiny before you, and the deliverer is with you. And so you ought to walk in faith that everything is going to be all right. It's both reasonable, it's both right, and it's both rewarding to go forward. Here's what they find, that as they are going the long way around, that they come to a Red Sea. And they have no boat to cross over, and most of them can't even swim uh, far enough to go over this Red Sea on their own. And now they have Pharaoh's army behind him. Here's what God does. He takes the pillar and he moves it from in front of them and puts it behind them. Why? Because he always has their back. God puts it behind them for two reasons. The first reason is to keep from Pharaoh, keep Pharaoh from overtaking them. But the second reason is to keep them from turning back. How many of you know that when you have decided to follow Jesus, there ain't no going back? The only way you can go is forward. That's the only way you can go when you have the Lord in your life. You must go forward. And here's what God promises us today. He says, if you go forward, I'll do the fighting. And that's why I say to you today, go forward and let God fight. When you go forward and let God fight, you forget the past. You fear not. You firm up and you have faith in him and you go forward. We all have some kings in our lives that need to be killed. We all have some enemies in our lives that need to be destroyed. But God says the good news today is that it's not your fight. It's my fight. It's only for you to go forward. That's why I'm not tripping over anything that is trying to get me to turn back or even stand still. If it's not the pillar that God has placed in my life that's telling me to stand still, then I'm going to keep going forward. Go forward, first of all, in faith, and God will fight your fears. Here's what happened. They have a fear. They have a reasonable fear. This is what they do. They say to Moses, hey, hey bro, Moses, come here. Let me talk to you for a minute. Uh, didn't we tell you uh, back in Egypt that um, this was going to happen? Did, didn't we tell you to just leave us alone? Now you got us out here with all of our family, with all of our friends, and we trapped at a Red Sea. We don't know where to go. And they start crying out to the Lord. Let me tell you something. There are two cries that people give. There's one from fear, and then there's one from faith. The cry that Israel was giving today was a, a cry from fear. They were fearful, and it's all right to cry out to the Lord when you are fearful. But Moses cried out to the Lord for a different reason. Moses cried out to the Lord in faith, saying, Lord, I know that you're able. Just tell me what to do. When you have faith, God will take care of your fears. Go forward in faith. Let God fight your fears. The second thing that I see in the text is that God tells them to go forward in expectation. And God will fight their enemies. This is what happens. As they are getting ready to go forward, Moses cries out to God. God, in verse 15, says to him, what you crying to me for? Why are you asking me what you ought to do? 
Stretch out your rod across the Red Sea and take the people forward. Moses, without even knowing what this rod would do in his hand, he stretches out that rod and the people have to now go forward because a Red Sea has opened up in front of them and they cross over on dry land. How many of you know that when we have the expectation to go forward, that there's nothing that can stand in our ways? There's no seas that we can't cross. There's no deserts that we can't make it through. There's no enemies that can make us turn back because I have an expectation. It's a reasonable, right, and rewarding expectation because God said so himself. He told me to go forward, and I expect that we're going forward. And while I'm going forward in expectation, he's fighting my enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's fighting my enemies. Go forward in faith and God will fight your fears. Go forward in expectation and God will fight your enemies. And then last point, go forward in worship and God will fight your wilderness. Here's what happens. When they went forward in faith, God took care of their fears. He opened up a Red Sea in front of them. When they went across the Red Sea in expectation, God took care of their enemies. He allowed Pharaoh and his army to pursue after them and then get drowned in the Red Sea. Moses stretched his rod back out and the whole army was drowned. And Moses told them that these Egyptians that you see today, you'll never have to see them ever again. And then when they made it over into the wilderness, they picked an odd place to worship the Lord. And that's all I'm asking you. You may be in an odd place right now. You may not even have the promise that you were expecting. You may not have even made it to your destination. But how many of you know that the wilderness is a great re is a great place to pause momentarily just to worship the Lord. And the Bible says in chapter 15 that they began to worship the Lord in their wilderness. Hold on, wait a minute. They don't even make it to the promised land yet. They haven't seen their destination. They haven't gotten to where they are going. They don't know what else they're going to encounter along the way. They don't know how things are going to happen. They don't know how it's going to work out. But after you have seen what the Israel realize it just seen that you got a reason to worship God because you know that a God that can drown Pharaoh and his army in a Red Sea and bring you across on dry land is capable of anything and that's what I've come to encourage you with today to go forward in the name of Jesus and let God do the fighting just worry about going forward and he will fight and if you let the Lord fight your battles it doesn't matter what stand in your way. You shall make it to your destination. I wish I had half a church in here that had helped me praise the name of the Lord today because God has brought you from where you used to be to where you are right now. And God is not interested in leaving you where you are right now. But, but God is interested in taking you forward he doesn't want you to leave and be left behind, but God wants to take you to higher heights, and he wants to take you to deeper depths. God wants to take you forward, and if you let God take you forward, it doesn't matter what stands in your way. If you've got the faith to go forward, He's got the strength to fight on your behalf. If you go forward, then let God do the fighting. And if you let God do the fighting, then you ought to just go forward, trusting in the name of the Lord. Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures. To all generations. And I wish I had a church here that had helped me praise the name of the Lord 
and say, I'm going forward no matter what goes wrong in my life. I'm going forward no matter how many times I have to pray about it. I'm going forward no matter what the enemy throws at me. I'm going forward in the name of the Lord. And when I get on the other side of this, when I get on the other side of this wilderness, when I get to where God wants me to be, as a matter of fact, I ain't even going to wait till then. But I'm going to worship him right now. I'm going to praise him right now. Because if he can bring me this far, I've got enough faith to believe that he's going to take me forward some more. I wish I had somebody that would help me praise God because we're going forward. We're going forward in the name of the Lord. We're going forward in the name of Jesus. Nothing's going to hold you back. There's no seed that can block you. There's no army that can stop you. You're going forward in the name of Jesus. And everything that stands in your way has to clear out of the way. It's got to clear a path for you. Because God is taking you forward. Nothing can stand in his way. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name? When we call on the name of the Lord, we have no choice but to have victory. The kind of victory that only comes from God. I expect great things for you, House of Hope. I expect that as God moves you forward, you're going to see some things that might trouble you. But you're also going to see things that show you triumph. You might see some things that would typically make you fearful. But God's just trying to build your faith. You might experience some enemies along the way. That's all right. There's still great expectation for you. And no matter what wilderness you have to trench through, realize that God is still worthy of worship and praise. As you go forward in God's name, my prayer today is that you don't make the same mistake of crying out of fear, but always cry out to the Lord in faith. Don't make the same mistake of saying that we can't do it when God has already done so much. There's nothing that you can't handle because God fights for you. Go forward and let God fight. God bless you today.